All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tiago Palaniapan with TriStar. Uh, so we would like to welcome you to this ANSYS AIM webinar. Uh, as you know, every Thursday, TriStar runs webinars on the PTC products like Creoparametric Windchill, as well as on the ANSYS products like ANSYS AIM. So this is our uh, fourth webinar on the ANSYS AIM product. And today's topic is uh, powerful simulation and design exploration and optimization all in one environment using the new ANSYS AIM product. Um, <clears throat> just an FYI that all of you are muted during this presentation and towards the end, I'm thinking it's going to be like a, a 30 minute, half hour uh, webinar here. And towards the end, uh, I will unmute you. You can, uh, or you can start typing in your questions in the question area or the chat session and I will try my best to answer your questions. Um, so real quick, before we get going, just one of the promotions that we are running through the end of uh, September, right, which is pretty close, um, just you get 50% off on a single AIM Pro, pay, Pro uh, paid up or annual lease license. So if you would like to know more about this offer, please reach out to your account reps at TriStar or call us with additional information that you might like. So that's uh, just an FYI before we get started. Now, from an agenda standpoint, um, I wanted to do a demonstration on the AIM, uh, ANSYS AIM product. At the same time, some of you may not be aware of what exactly is ANSYS AIM. So I wanted to run through a couple of slides real quick, talking about the capabilities and also what exactly is ANSYS AIM. And then uh, I'll spend most of the presentation's time with the software, where I'll show you a couple of examples, maybe one with a multi-physics fluid structure simulation, and then another one just a basic structural analysis, so you could see um, the power and the ease of use of the ANSYS AIM product. Now, uh, you can start typing your questions. There should be a question area or a chat area feel free to start typing in your questions and I'll get to it uh, as soon as I'm done with the, the demo. <clears throat> so as you can see, I have a snapshot of, of uh, the latest release of ANSYS, which is 17.2, which has a lot of predefined templates. But before we talk about what exactly it is, I just wanted to give you an idea of this new product of what exactly is ANSYS AIM. So it is an integrated solution for 3D engineering simulation, right? With the breadth of ANSYS physics, in an easy to use environment, right? So it's really built from the ground up on ANSYS technology. And we're all familiar with ANSYS, right? They are the golden standard in the analysis world. They've been there for more than 40 years, right? So the only thing is the interface, they've given an immersive user environment that lets you perform engineering simulation from start to finish in a single window user environment. So all the way, beginning from geometry creation and preparation. For example, you may want to create a fluid flow volume, right? Or you may want to defeature your assembly or parts. Uh, and then proceeding to meshing, applying contacts on large assemblies. Then do the physics setup, right? Depending on the type of physics you would like to analyze. And, and of course, the solution, right? And the post-processing of it. So the results processing, whether it's fluid flow, stress analysis, or it could be a heat transfer situation or electric conduction, or even it could be um, a physics wherein you do have these multi-physics situations wherein you would like to get the results of the fluid flow to be applied on the structural analysis and you would like to see what is the stress on that part due to the fluid flow. So, so one of the key points or key capabilities of ANSYS products generally is the ability to couple these multi-physics environments, right, rather than just buying different softwares for different um, physics solving, right. So, um, so AIM also includes one of the most important things, the design exploration to evaluate your designs or alternatives, right, better designs before you, you uh, release a product. So it's going to help you with that evaluation process up from during your design process wherein you are essentially able to create parameters off of your CAD file or within AIM, there is a space claim engine that works behind the scenes where you're able to edit geometry, apply some parameters, and see the effect of changing those design parameters on your analysis outputs 
like temperature, stress, right, uh, fluid flow, mass, fl mass flow rate, velocity, what have you, right? So, so that's a very important piece that I want to demonstrate this using an example later uh, once I'm done with these slides. Um, now, why is ANSYS AIM uh, a, a, a different or how is it different compared to the traditional ANSYS products that you may have seen is that it's meant for every engineer. It's really not, it's, 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 it's not meant to be only for the analyst or for the super experienced FEA guy in the company. Any designer or engineer should be able to use it because it has predefined template and the ease of use. Right, that's, I'll, I'll demonstrate it during the example. From the get-go, when you start using uh, ANSYS, it's going to you know, present you with a, a couple of, a few templates as, that I've listed there, right in here. You can see structural template, a fluid flow template, or a thermal template, or even multi-physics templates like fluid structure interaction, right? Now, based on that template, the software is automatically going to create a workflow which is task-based right and it's going to inform you as to what you need what it needs next so even you could be a brand new user and you're still it's going to walk you through that and with the ability to customize these templates as well or create additional or new templates so here's an example of a single physics workflow task and an example of a multi physics workflow task so let's say i chose the structural template all it gives me is four simple tasks. One is to import or create the geometry with the ability to edit them if required and configure it, suppress it, defeature it, etc. At the same time, and the next step is obviously to create the mesh. So the, the little lightning bolt with the yellow, that's telling me that it's waiting for the mesh, for me to apply or generate the mesh. And then it's going to solve the physics, and then you create the results. So pretty straightforward, and it's going to help you through that process as you go through each task in sequence. Same thing with a fluid structure interaction, wherein you are essentially able to again. You see how the, I have two rows here, wherein the first row is essentially going to solve the fluid flow. And then what it's going to do is it is going to do the physics coupling using this one. It's automated wherein it knows to pull in the results from the physics, from the fluid flow, uh, and then apply it to your structural analysis. So this is something that I want to demonstrate later, but it's called fluid structure interaction, right, where you can see how multi-physics simulations can be done very easily at the same time accurately with the power and the depth of ANSYS, ANSYS solvers that we, we know all these years, right? Um, so here's an example. You start with a geometry, and the geometry can be a simple part or a complex assembly, right? Um, and it could, and, and I'll talk about the different interfaces to other CAD tools. Uh, ANSYS allows you to open um, files from other CAD systems. You know, it allows you to read direct native files. So once you get the geometry, the next step is obviously to create the mesh. And if required, you can refine the mesh. You can apply different mesh controls. Um, there are some automated, automated tasks for that. Um, if it's a fluid flow analysis, you can apply inflation criteria at certain regions of the fluid flow volume, right? And once you're done with the mesh, the next step would be to create the physics, right? Or solve the physics, I should say. And which involves setting up materials, setting up boundary conditions, loads, right? Depending on the type of physics, right? Depending on the type of template, it will help you through that process as well. And then finally, you solve it and you view the results. So this is the ANSYS AIM interface that I, that I have a screenshot wherein essentially it, it walks the user through using these tasks that I have at the bottom, right? Which I'll show you to you in a few minutes here. <coughs> Now, it has integrated geometry modeling. So when you buy ANSYS AIM, you also, it's also inclu included is space plane, which is essentially their uh, geometry um, um, you know, module that allows you to edit, right? And it also allows you to prepare your assemblies or parts for analysis. For example, to create the fluid flow volume, many CAT tools don't have an easy way to create a fluid flow volume. But then ANSYS Space Claim Engine, it allows you to do that. 
you can quickly create a fluid flow volume. You can make edits, changes, right? Quick changes. Um, you can also, so let's say you have a large assembly wherein you would like to create shells instead of solids. It allows you to do the shell compression. So, so there are quite a lot of tools within this geometry environment and you simply switch, you can switch between this geometry environment and the analysis environment anytime go back and forth as it's in one single environment essentially, right? Um, so I can, once I get the geometry, then essentially you are going to mesh it and then, you know, solve the physics and then create the results, right? So when I say integrated geometry modeling, I'm talking about these are the examples you can see in the bottom right corner. I do have an extracted fluid volume. Now, that's not a very easy task in most CAD systems. However, with an AIM, the space claim engine allows you to do that, right? With the ability to expose parameters. So you have bi-directional associativity between your CAD system and ANSYS AIM, wherein you are uh, able to expose some dimensions and parameters as what we call parameter parameters on the ANSYS side. And then you can uh, set up different values for it and see how the analysis behaves or results change based on that. And here is an example of the multi-physics environment where I have fluid flow and the structural simulation. So I did the fluid flow. You can see the path lines right there. Um, and then I would like to take that and I would like to, on the entire assembly, I would like to input the, the output from the fluid flow into the structural analysis and run it in one single tool or in one single template. Now, traditionally, I've seen during my analysis days, we used to get different software packages or analysis packages to do different analysis, right? One for structural, one for CFD, right? But you don't have to do that. It's all in one single environment. <clears throat> with the ability to run what-if scenarios. Now, in my experience, what-if scenarios in any analysis situation is very important, right? It's great that you could see the results. You can see the cool color plots of the high stress concentrations, deflections, temperature, and the fluid flow path lines, maybe mass flow rate. But then what happens if you'd like to improve the design from a performance standpoint, right? I need to make sure the stress doesn't go beyond a certain value. The temperature in my printed circuit board shouldn't exceed a certain value. How do you have the software do that for you? You can help make use of these design points. So here I'm using design points, which are essentially outputs from my analysis. These are outputs like a mass flow rate. Here is a temperature output right there. But there should be an inlet, right? I, I have to, I'm changing some dimensions and that is causing these to change. And I can specify those, for example, I want to use different inlet temperature and then see the effect um, of a certain uh, analysis output, right? Or change the dimension itself, change the material, etc. right? So that's something you can use um, these design points. You can use a parameter engine to help you through that process, right? So you're not just doing the how much questions, but you're also doing the what if scenarios. <clears throat> so here's a, just another slide showing you some of the examples of where design exploration and optimization can be used in one single environment right there, okay? Now, depending on, I'm not sure what CAD system you use, but depending on what CAD system you use, when you install the software, you do have the ability to configure um, your inst installer to make sure that it picks up the model in session that you have in your CAD system. So in my case, it's Creo Parametric. You may be using some other CAD system, but you could see how all the other supported CAD systems are listed where it essentially connects to AIM, right? When I say connects, you're able to bring in the model in session from that CAD system. <clears throat> You just have to specify the location where you've installed the software and then it picks it up. So once you do that, as you can see in the slide, what you're going to see is you'll see a tab for ANSYS, right? Depending on the release that you have uh, installed, you just can just launch AIM from within that tab or you can launch AIM separately. It's, uh, it's a separate application but it can connect to a live or an active CAD session, right? Like in this case, I, I do have a CAD session wherein um, I have a part 
the TriStar part that I've opened and I'm able to just uh, select that and import it with the ability to expose some parameters off of that part, right? So I have the ability to uh, even you see a few options here. Would you like to do thermal analysis? What type of physics would you like to apply? And do you want to automatically assign contacts and large assemblies, etc.? A few settings, and then you just uh, go through those tasks that's come up that will come up in the workflow based on the template you select. <clears throat> so here's an example where after importing the file from the CAD system, I am exposing one of the dimensions here, right? I have a fillet radius that I can expose. So like this, I can expose it, just parameterize it, which means ANSYS understands that you might be changing those values. And I want to see how my deflection or stress changed based on that. Right? So. <clears throat> there are a few, um, um, you know, automation options and customization options. Uh, we talked about um, templates that are available, predefined templates. Um, but with a little bit of journaling and a little bit of scripting, you know, uh, we have it's uh, Iron Python based scripting where you are able to add, new, you know, additional templates if you would like. I'll show you when I do the demo where I do have a few additional templates here. Like for example, I need to do uh, a hip implant analysis and this is something we do often and I am the CAE methods leader in my company and I've, I've created a best practice or methodology but now I would like my entire design team or the engineering team that may not be as experienced in FEA but I would like them to walk through this template or the workflow or the best practice that I've created so without really training them or with minimum very minimum training I'm essentially able to create a new template called hip implant analysis with the ability to even have some additional help files. I can customize that, right? Um, so that the user just imports a geometry and just he walks through that template and he could just be the, a designer without even any experience in the FEA, right? So this could be developed by the experienced guy, right? So that's, uh, here are some more examples. Uh, for example, one for electrostatic and one for wind tunnel testing, one for internal flow, that's a fluid flow problem, right? Specific problems where I may want to just expose a certain things to the user, not everything, right? So it's all done using standard XML and Python language, right? And there is uh, the ANSYS customer portal has a lot of information on how to do it, right? In fact, um, you can even download these apps from the ANSYS uh, application store, right? Uh, so here's an example of how that, you know, whenever you work on ANSYS AIM, everything is being recorded, right, in this journal file. And we're essentially reusing that journal file and converting that into a template um, that, that you see here, right? So. And uh, every time, you know, it stores in a, in a default folder, which you can change as you work on it. It stores in, in what we call the sessions file and all you're doing is just adding some additional scripting to it and then you can, you guess, you know, like in this example, I even have a HTML help file that I want my designer to look at. You know, when he opens this model and sees the template, he may not understand all these little uh, uh, um, inputs so I can just give him a little idea of what exactly it means, where are you supposed to apply the load, you know, how should we constrain it, etc. right there, right? So this, again, customizable, fully customizable. So here is another custom template um, for electrostatics. Here is one for internal fluid flow, right? Again, it's uh, a multi-physics simulation right there where I don't, I know there is an out-of-the-box out of fluid structure interaction, but maybe I customized it wherein I want to apply specific um, best practices when setting up the model. As you know, the results of any FEA is very much dependent on how you set it up. So that's what you're doing here. <clears throat> so here's an example of um, another template where, you know, this is more for, um, for aerodynamics, for CFD, for virtual wind tunnel template that could be used, as you can see, to do the analysis on the spoiler, to do the analysis on, on the entire, on the skyscrapers, right? Um, it can be used on the, on the football there. So you could see how a virtual wind tunnel app could really allow you to apply those in a variety of designs, right? Design models. So, and all these these uh, these 
four applications that I talked about, they're available in the ANSYS Act application store, right, where you can download these if you have already AIM, right? So, so let me pause there and let's uh, show you a little bit of uh, just a quick demo here. So when you launch ANSYS, uh, what I have is ANSYS 17.2, which is the latest release. Um, and from the get-go, before even opening any file, I'm, I'm, I have an option to select one of these process templates. So am I going to select structural fluid flow, uh, fluid structure interaction, right, magnetics, right, um, and, and like that. So let me just, for now, let's say I want to do a fluid structure interaction right, or FSI template. I'm selecting the template, and like I said earlier, if I have an active CAT session, I can connect to it or simply import geometry or define a new geometry within space claim, right, which is ANSYS geometry modeling environment or editing environment, right. Um, I can allow editing or say don't allow editing. I could uh, allow some configuration wherein I may have an assembly where I may not need every single part so I would like to suppress a few components within AIM, right? I can either detect contacts automatically if I'm doing more of a structural analysis, but I can also define it manually. What type of flow? Is it compressible or incompressible? So I'm presented with a few default options which you can change, and this is something you can capture in those custom templates as well, right? So you don't have to have the users do this every time. You, know, you can further automate it, right? So. So right here, let me just go create a simulation process. And immediately, it's asking me to import geometry here. So let's say I want to go to a folder wherein I'm having a butterfly valve. It's an assembly. And as you can see at the bottom, as I'm opening that file, you can see something that's happening at the bottom wherein it is trying to, add, it has added already two rows, right? The first one is more for the fluid flow, right? And so it's still working on getting the geometry, right, into AIM. But once it's done the import, it'll allow me to configure it. It'll allow me to mesh it, apply the fluid flow, maybe apply inlet pressure, exit pressure, velocity, what have you, and then solve the physics, right? I've already solved it. I'll show you the result. But I wanted to show you the setup and just really the interface using this example and once you're done with the results, you have the ability to couple it with the, on the structural side, which I'm going to show you in a little bit here. So again, you know, I, I'm, I just opened uh, the file that I'm opening is a space claim uh, document. But you could open any other file too. So right now what I have is, you know, so I do have, as you can see, you know, it, it, has, it is an assembly. It's, uh, the, the intent here is, let's say, if I go to my uh, translucent uh, display environment here, as you can see, I do have a butterfly. It's like a butterfly valve. And you can see based on that valve angle, I may have an inlet, right? I may have uh, water going in here, right? Coming out in here, right? I, I may have a, a sensor inside, right? I would like to see do a structural analysis on the, on the read sensor inside. But before I do that, Depending on the angle of the valve, what happens if the valve is at 90, at 45? How does the flow separation happen? I would like to see the fluid flow analysis first and then apply that to a component inside to do my structural analysis, right? So that's the goal here. So again, let me just go back to my standard display here, right? And I would like to get rid of a few components in here since I'm just doing the fluid flow analysis first. I just need the fluid volume inside, which you can create within uh, space plan quickly, but I've already created it here. Let me go to the geometry. When I go to the geometry, so I'm going to go to my geometry tab. So I just have to use these workflows, right, or these tasks in these workflows. There are two of them. I'm just going to go to the geometry, and let me just select all these components real quick except the fluid flow volume inside, right? So let me, I have the ability to select bodies, for example. And there it goes. And I can essentially say, let's add some, uh, some suppress control here, right? Let's uh, configure it. And let's, uh, so I, I have the geometry. I go to my configuration here. And essentially just say, let's select all the bodies for now. But then I want to deselect one body out of it. And suppress it, which you could have done in your CAD system too, but you're able to do it right in here, right? Um, because we created the fluid volume with an ANSYS. And I can configure it, so all I have is 
right now what it's working on is just it's going to give me just the fluid volume, right? It's essentially the volume of it's the it's the it's a mo, it's a it's a fluid extract volume of the water, right? That's kind of where I'll mesh and everything, right? So I, I'm done with that now. As you can see, it's uh, asking me to do the next one where the mesh is not done, right? So again, it's it's really essentially walks you through it, right? Um, I could go to the mesh now, right? And when I do the mesh, I get um, you know options to refine the mesh, control the resolution, etc. But I could also use right mouse clicks, right? Where you know it's waiting for me to do something. So it's telling me there's a problem. You know, fix this, and I can just say fix the inflation, right? So now when I say inflation, it's typically applied on fluid extracted volumes, right? For more accuracy, you apply the inflation, right? Where you need it more accurate. So this fluid uh, inflation, um, or this inflation feature that I'm going to apply on the fluid volume, where do I apply it, right? I can go to my faces and say I want to apply it pretty much on the entire surface, right? Uh, except the inlet and the outlet, right? And I'm just going to add that to my location set. I've added that. So now you see how it from a red, it turned yellow, wherein it, I just need to generate the mesh again. The little blue, you can see that this is walking me through as to what to do next, really, right? I could really be a new user and still, you know, the workflow tasks are going to help me. So I hit generate the mesh, and it's right now generating the mesh. And I can control, you know, how refined it is or how less refined it is. I can control all that. But um, so when I go to the mesh now, you can see how, you know, and again, that can be controlled, right? I mean, have a, let's say I want to have a lower resolution mesh, and I can just go update that. So right, I changed it, so now I need to regenerate the mesh or update the mesh. It's recreating the mesh, as you can see here. <coughs> There it goes, right? So what are the next next task is essentially to do the physics, right? I go to the fluid flow, right? It's a fluid flow physics. So the first thing obviously there is um, I need to ensure that, you know, it's, it's water, so I need to give the material, right? So when I go to material assignment, by default it has picked up air, but I could essentially, you know, just type in water, right? And, you know, you have you can have so many in the library, right? You have um, quite a lot of library. You can add your own material properties as well, right? But let me just go select water. And I can control the properties of water. So I applied that. Um, and when I go back to my flow, uh, um, what is the next thing? See how it's telling me to add, right? It's, it's uh, helping me there, right there, right? A few more attention is required right there. Um, or I could say I want to just apply, for example, the inlet and the outlet for the fluid. So I'm going to say the inlet is going to be this surface. And when I select that surface, I have the option to specify pressure, velocity, mass flow, etc. Right? So let's say I know the pressure at the inlet and it's going to be about so much Pascal. Right? Okay. I specified that. Uh, so now if I go to my boundary conditions, my inlet boundary, right? And so, it's, 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 uh, so if I go to my flow, um, right there, I have applied my boundary conditions, right? Right there, I could always say, hey, this is where I need to assign it. There it is, right? So I can select it, and it's very, you know, you can very user-friendly and change the unit system, what have you, right? Uh, I can also change the unit system up here, right? What unit system? I'm using the metric system, but... Um, I would also like to select an, another surface wherein, if I go back to my flow, I want to set that as my outlet. So if I'm in my fluid flow condition, I'm going to set that as my outlet. And again, I have, let's say, the pressure, and I want to just set it to zero. And one other thing when you assign, uh, when you apply, when you have used CFD, is you also need to let it know, right, as to what is the wall, right? If you think about that's where the velocity is zero, right? I mean, when the fluid flows to so the wall, is all, so I could just, the thing is when I select the wall, it automatically picks up based on my inlet and outlet, it picks up and it gives me additional options. You see how it picked all the phases of my fluid flow wall in the outside surfaces? And I can have the option to apply, you know, is it a stationary, you know, is it stationary or is it a moving wall, et cetera, right? You know, depending on what kind of geometry you have there. 
So that's done. So all so if you look at my task, I'm done with the geometry, the configuration, and the mesh. Now it's just a matter of doing the fluid flow, right? So I can go to the physics and I can essentially solve it right there. See now the solve comes up. So before, if you remember, it required me to apply some fluid flow conditions. So the minimum requirement. You have additional options here for an expert user, but if you're a new user, you know, it's gonna walk you through it, and now it's telling you can solve the physics. Now, this takes about five minutes to solve, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a file that I already solved just for the fluid, right? And I'm not gonna save this. So there, all I did was I've solved it. Uh, it takes about five minutes. Um, I'm using a laptop here, uh, about 16 gig RAM. But you know, it's very. I mean, Ansys uh, has the power to work on really large assemblies as well. But um, and they have something called HPC, high performance computing, where you can um, control the number of cores it can use, and there are quite a lot of capabilities depending on how complex your assemblies or your design models are. Right? <coughs> So there it is, right? So here, as you can see, it's the same one, but the only thing is I ran the flow, and now I can configure the results. So what kind of results would I be looking at in a fluid problem like this, right? In an analysis like this, I could just go and start creating my results. It could be contour plots, vector plots, right? Maybe streamline. That's something I might want, right? When I go to the streamline, I could specify my seed point here. That's my inlet right there, and I could just say, evaluate the result, <clears throat> and there I see the streamline, or I see the, the path line right there, um, and you could see, based on the angle that I have for that valve, you know, depending on that, you could see how separation happens. Um, now, I could choose to animate this. So that's where the water inlet was and the outlet. And you can see, now this is something I'd like to do an optimization or a design exploration study where I would like to see what happens if I were to change this angle, right? Maybe uh, to an angle like this, to an angle like this, how is it gonna affect my fluid flow, right? So that's something you can do really quickly with ANSYS AIM. So it's not just the how much question. So that's one plot. Now, I can also go to my results and say, other than this, I, I would also like to get the mass flow rate at the outlet. So what I could do is I'm simply right-clicking and saying, give me a calculated value there, right? And when I say calculated value, I have the option to, quite a few options here, as you can see, but let's just do mass flow. There it goes, and I hit evaluate, and it evaluated for me the mass flow rate, right? This is something I could parameterize and see how it changes when I change the angle, right, of the valve, right? I could do that too. So, so right now, we, when I look at the results, I have three results here, right? The velocity, right? You can see the velocity vector, the streamline, and I have a calculated value. Now, let me just call that as mass flow rate, so it makes sense. There it goes, right? So now the next step is obviously, after having, having done the fluid flow and, and I'm, I'm seeing the results, now I need to get to the structural side. So I'm gonna go back to my geometry configuration on the structural side, which brings back the old, the full assembly. And what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna just essentially select all the bodies, right? Let me go to bodies here. including this body, and I would like to just add suppress controls in there and configure. So I need to, I, there is a read sensor inside, and this is the one, right? I need to see, now I want to do a stress analysis. We know that the fluid flows around this, and if I were to, if this is supported at this point, I would like to know the stress and the deflection on this geometry, right? So that's why, you know, the same assembly, I'm working on the same assembly, however, I'm just working on one single part here. I can configure it for each of my analysis of each of my physics tasks, right? And obviously the next step is to go to the mesh. So let me just generate the mesh. I could 
solve and then it will automatically do the mesh, right? It's not a prerequisite, but I could always look at the mesh or refine it a little bit if required, etc. right? So right now I want to run it. Let me use a coarse mesh here. So I want to run it in real time real quick here. Um, so and then I can do my structural side, right? On my structural side, first of all, the material. So let's say, let's assume that this reed sensor is not made of steel. Let's say it's made of uh, polyethylene or something, right? So as you can see, as I start typing in, it picks up the material and I sign that and I can go click on it, look at its properties, etc. right there. Right? So I can do that anytime. So going back to structural, or I can use the breadcrumbs in, you know, links in here. You know, it's very easy to use. So many ways to do the same thing, as you can see, right? Um, and then it, it, it's asking me for some, some information still, right? So let's say I want to go and obviously I need to apply a support where I need to constrain it to a static analysis. So let me just constrain this space. And now when I go back to structural analysis, and if I look at it, it's helping me, right? Okay, you forgot the physics coupling there. So, so, so the physics coupling that I was talking about is this one. I, it needs, I need to tell it, I know it can automatically do this, I need to tell it where exactly that fluid flow results are applied on this body, right? So that's what I'm going to do now, where I'm going to say physics coupling. And on the physics coupling, I would, I'd say I want to use pretty much the entire surface, all surfaces, right? Um, but in excluding the support surface, right? That's the only thing where we're going to constrain it, right? There it goes. And now everything is good. It's all green, as you can see. It's no longer, I don't see any reds in here. So it's just a matter of updating the, uh, or solving it, right? So I can just go and uh, solve the physics. So I did not apply any external loads, as you know, because I want the fluid flow results to be applied as a load in my structural side. So it does the physics coupling, which is a major advantage compared to many of the traditional FEA tools out there where they have you buy different tools to run different physics, right? And then now I can go to my results and out of the box, when you do a static analysis, it does have equal in stress and it has a displacement magnitude, but let me update the results or evaluate it first since we just ran the analysis. And if I go to my equal and stress, and I can hit play, and you can see the stress plot, the maximum stress. Similarly, I could go back to my results contours and say I want to look at the deflection plot, run the animation. Now, so we have solved, uh, you, you know, this multi-physics problem. But now, what if I want to change that angle of the valve that I showed you in the assembly and then see how it behaves, right? I could always go back to the geometry, the original geometry, right? And remember the source, right? We imported it. It was a SolidWorks, I'm sorry, a, a space plane file. But there, you see, I had exposed the angle, right? Um, so the 60 is a dimension. It's the angular dimension. And I want to parameterize that. I could just hit the P which means that now ANSYS understands that I would like to vary that and see the effect of the results. Now, what about the outputs? That's the input that I'm going to change, but let me go to the results of the fluid flow analysis, and maybe I might want to see how the mass flow rate changes when I change the input, right, angle. I'm going to parameterize that as well. There it goes, right? So once I parameter, now I could also, don't think it's only for fluid flow, even for the structural side, right? Maybe let's say I want to parameterize the deflection or the stress, right? The maximum de de deflection is something that I would like to parameterize. So I have, I hit the P on those three values, right? The angle, the stress, and the mass, I'm sorry, the deflection and the mass flow rate. Now what I could do is I have this uh, design point dashboard. So this is where the what if scenarios are going to start right here. So right in here. So far I was, we were just looking for results, but now I'm going to run um, some optimization studies using those design points, right? So I have the 60 degree is what um, the original value was. And I'm going to say, let's try with 30. Let's also try with zero degree. 
let's try with minus 30, let's try with minus 45, let's try with minus 60, etc. So you see where I'm going with this where like this you could have several parameters that you have you could expose, change them and then simply hit update all which will essentially run the analysis with these different values on and then give you the outputs which is the mass flow rate and the deflection in a thermal analysis it could be temperature right uh, so depending on the physics the output varies and those output can be tracked um, based on this input measure value that you type in right so <clears throat> So those are, that's just a quick, I don't want to run it because it's, uh, it's you know, you, you, you get the idea as to how this, this behaves, wherein you are able to, in one single environment, you are running some really complex analysis really quickly using these predefined templates, and at the same time, you're also running uh, some optimization studies that as a designer or an engineer, you're interested in it right? You are interested in that, right? Your manager is going to show, look at the results and say, okay, that's great, but now how do you improve the design? And that's where rather than making a guess and then trying to rerun the analysis, you are essentially able to do that in one single tool, right? You could al always change it in your CAD tool and then update it within AIM. That's also possible since you can always, it's connected to um, a, the live CAD session but you can also do it within the space claim environment within ANSYS AIM. You could also do a pretty simple, straightforward uh, structural study. So don't think it can only do multi-physics, can do a single physics. For example, I can just do a very simple structural one here, right? I can either have it connected to my CAD session or import geometry, right? Uh, allow editing, right? So when I create my um, simulation process here, let's say I want to select, um, bracket part. So this is just a single physics and once it imports the part, all you should see is a, is a, is a four task um, workflow wherein all you have is the geometry and then uh, you would have the, the mesh, obviously geometry configuration, mesh and the results, right? The physics and the results. There it is. So there you go, right? Pretty straightforward. So here, again, you know, I've, I'm done with the geometry. Now I go to my mesh. I generate the mesh, there it goes, right, I go to my physics, apply my material, if you don't assign anything it's going to pick up steel, let's say I'm fine with that, I'm cool with that, and I would like to go and assign some constraints, let's, let's assume that this uh, bracket is used to lift aircraft engines, and that's where I'd like to support it, and I'd like to apply a load on these holes right here. So I can apply inertia load, moment load, pressure load, etc. Right? I can apply a force load on these geometries. I can drag, select, and everything. There are quite a few options there. And I want to assign the load. Uh, let's say in direction components right here, right in X, Y, Z. You, can, you get to assign that in different directions. So let's say in the Z direction, maybe I want to assign, let's see here, um, about Okay, so that's what I want. So apply the load here, assuming that's, you know, so if you think about it, right, when it's used to lift an aircraft engine, you know, I'm assuming the load is in this direction, right, the maximum load, that's kind of what I'm applying there. So now all I have to really do is go to the results directly, or maybe solve it first, right, just update that task, which is essentially going to solve the physics. So you could do multi-physics and single physics using those tasks. So I think, um, you know, I, 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 I've used ANSYS back in the early days, but, you know, the interface and the, and the environment and these automation tasks, it's, it's huge, I think, for new users as well as experienced users where you can uh, customize these, you know, further using those additional extensions that I was talking about. And now I can just go update the results.
and look at the equivalent stress play the animation, it's kind of exaggerated animation kind of showing what's going to happen with that load and I apply it. <clears throat> and I can also go to deflection plot and appearance and all, you know, they all can be changed if you want to have a smooth one or a or different plot like this. I know all those uh, things you know you can change in these dialog box, but you can see how quick and easy it is at the same time it's accurate, you know. Like I said, you know, uh, it's built on the ANSYS workbench platform, right? It's that you're 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 given a very new and easy to use environment, right? Now one last thing before we do the Q and A session here. Um, <clears throat> can I add additional templates here, right? How do I do that? Is so you could download those extensions from the ANSYS application act application uh, store, right? And there you could say once you install the extension, right, um, there are documentation for this to where exactly you install it, but here let's say I want to have these three. And what happens is I do get I will, uh, so the next time when you launch, um, it, it is going to come up with some additional temp, there you go, right? You know, it just took a little bit there, but you see these are the three that I have. So the next time when I want to run a wind tunnel test or an internal flow test or a hip plant analysis, I just go to the hip plant and I simply open the geometry file essentially, right? I can just go to the file and, and for example, if I go to demos and let's say if I have a I have one of the files here it's essentially loading the geometry the template and everything right there right I could also have additional custom help files but it's uh, there you go right and then you see how it doesn't it's it's, it's immediately giving me I am a new user it allows me to change the Young's modulus assign the Poisson's ratio, and, you know, I can change it or I can hit next, and I could say where exactly you want to apply the load, right, where you want to apply the load, where you apply the support, right, you, it's, it's pretty, you know, so you can see how I could go to, okay, I want to probably select this area where that's where I want to apply another support, or I want to go to this, this whole surface here, and that's where I want to assign this, so I keep hitting next, next, and, and, and it's, it's, it's more like you're further automating an already automated template wherein this is where um, I, one of you could be the experienced FEA user and you are kind of making sure that there are some best practices, some good methodologies that they have to follow, the design group has to follow when they do their analysis, right? So this is what it's doing right now. So it's executing that and then it'll, it'll work its way. Right? So, right? so um, while it's doing that, let me see if there's any if there are any questions in the chat session here. Any questions yet? Please uh, type in your questions, and I'll, um, hopefully, you know, it was just an overview. What I just did was an overview of multi-physics and single physics, just to give you an idea. If you have, if you want more information on any specific physics, uh, we could always do uh, like additional, like any any type of demos. Uh, you can, you can please reach out to your reps at TriStar, and we can help you further with this. Let me just take a quick minute here just to see if there's any other questions. All right, so looks like there are no questions at this time. Um, so just wanted to, um, you know, um, wrap up with by again reminding you about this um, AIM offer that 
that's running through the end of this month. Please reach out to your account rep at Tricer, or call us or call us to get more information about this. And uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and thanks again for attending this webinar. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all soon in the next Thursday webinar from TriStar. You know, have a great rest of the day and have a great weekend.